The economy's doing great in America. I'm here with uh, Dave Anthony from the Dollar Podcast. The miserable liberal Steph Zamorano's with me, and you know the 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 economy's doing doing great, and um, ex- corporate profits are record, and uh, Wall Street's at records. By our military industrial complex, wars are at record. Wars, everything's at record except pay to people who are workers in America, right? And um, well, it's kind of set up that way. Uh, our, it, it, if you want to talk about out of touch uh, leaders, our leaders are completely out of touch with the fact that half the country is poor or in poverty. Half in the richest country the face of the earth has ever seen. You've heard me say this a million times, but um, it's because it's been set up. And it's because our leaders have sold out our country to corporations. Just like Ned Beatty said in 1970-whatever in Network, he said there are no countries anymore. There are only corporations. And that is true. So no one has an allegiance to our country. There's no such thing as patriotism. It's only service to the dollar, which is service to the corporation. And I'll give, so, for instance, uh, the way, what's happening in America now, this new economy that we're going to talk about Uber in just a second, Dave and Anthony's here to talk about that. Uh, This new economy is really about screwing people over. Hey, things are so bad, people have to work two and three jobs in our new economy. Things are so bad. Well, I don't know. Here's what George Bush says. Uh, Here's what he said about setting up. uh, Our enemies are innovative and resourceful. And so are we. They never stop thinking about new ways to harm our country and our people. And neither do we. All right. There you go. So. I, I totally <laughs> forgot how he gets happy when he finishes reading a sentence. <laughs> he always did that. He got so happy when he did it right. <laughs> and uh, so what? I, so they never stop thinking of new ways to, yeah, by like cutting Social Security, cutting Medicare, giving tax breaks to corporations who take good jobs and send them to desperate people in poorer country. Those are the kind of things that they think, they, how can we screw over Americans even more? Hey, how about if we put a pipeline under drinking water reservoirs that takes that oil and sends it to other countries, wouldn't even use it? Oh, well, that's a good way to screw over our own country. So that's what they do. They they are sitting up at night thinking of ways to screw over America. And here's something weird. Uh, this was from George Bush. He would give these town halls. And he was on stage talking with a woman. And uh, this happened. There's a certain comfort to know that the promises made will be kept by the government. You don't have to worry. That's good because I work three jobs and I feel like I contribute. You work three jobs. Wow. He w- and, and so I bet you George Bush is going to say, that's horrible. In America, you shouldn't have to work three jobs just to have a living. We're the richest country in the world. And we're going to have a program. You should have one good job. Yours is America. People come here for upward mobility. And if you're willing to work 40 hours a week, you're going to have a living wage and two chickens in your pot and a car in the garage and all that stuff. I'm going to and I'm going to do I'm going to make this economy work for Americans again. Let's see what he says. Jobs. Yes. Uniquely American, isn't it? I mean, that is fantastic. There's a certain comfort. Let's hear it again. Let's hear it again. Is made will be kept by the government. You don't have to worry. That's good because I work three jobs and I feel like I contribute. You work three jobs. Three jobs. Yes. Uniquely American, isn't it? I mean, that is fantastic that you're doing that. No, that's horrible. That's a breakdown of our system. That's what that indicates. That doesn't, that's fine. Isn't that fantastic? So what he's trying to go is, look, Americans work harder than the rest of the, they're more willing to work harder. You go to Europe, people aren't going to work three jobs. They'll only work one. And they probably want a goddamn union. How, how great is it that you're not spending time with your children, man? <laughs> Come on, let's give, let's, give, let's give her a round of applause for never seeing her kids. <laughs> Isn't that uniquely American? We, do, we leave our kids. I'm surprised he wasn't like, and let me ask you, are you also, did you manage to get on welfare at the same time? Because you're not getting paid enough. (laughs) Now, are those three jobs, is that, are they all at different Walmarts, so you're still uh, poor? So now, he actually does have an ending to this, so let's listen. You get any sleep? Oh. Oh my God, no. No, you fucking asshole, I'm not getting... I said I'm working three jobs. I'm not getting anything. You get any sleep? Because I saw this tweet from Luke Savage, who's a, who's a writer, writes about topical things. 
And he said, no, yeah, the new economy is great. And I'm like, well, what does he mean by that? What is that all about? So I, here's the tweets he's talking about, which goes into exactly what we're talking about. This is she got the Golden Fist Bump Award goes to Mary of Chicago. Shout out to all the impressive Lyft parents out there like Mary, a longtime Lyft driver who was still on the road at nine months pregnant. And that uniquely American. Isn't that great? It's so great because uh, she could get into an accident and the uh, driver's airbag here and she could go right into right, right into labor. Right into labor right there. She, well, Dave, it's funny you bring that up because when contractions persisted, she headed to the hospital, but not before accepting one last request. The next morning, baby Maven Mia joined the Lyft family. Like everyone isn't screaming in horror. They're like, isn't that great? In that you in that great look she was going into labor and she still picked up that's how poor Americans are. They still have to work through their fucking delivery. Because she's thinking she works for Lyft, so she doesn't have any maternity coverage. She has no vacation time. She has nothing. So she has to work until the baby is crowning. Literally. Because she knows she's gonna be out of work for a month. It should be six months to a year. And she, and she's just going to take a month off before she gets going again. Like it's that's horrifying. Well, that's you yeah. Because my ahead. water just broke, but I'm going to finish this story. Oh, I appreciate <laughs> you doing that, Steph. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Because we, you know, at Lyft, we don't provide anybody with any uh, maternity leave or health care or anything or aftercare or daycare or any kind of care. We Nothing. It's bare bones. It's a horrible situation. And we've set that up because corporations run our government and that's our government. They're all co corrupt. And well, there's another one of these. Hey, wait. Take a look at her face. Is that is that the is that the face of uh, someone who just won the golden fist bump? Uh, it, it is. That's She's it. so sad. She's uh, trying to smile very hard, but there's a there, she's just like uh. the fact that that woman has to work that hard. It makes me sad. Oh, it's horrifying. Makes me so sad. So let's. But this is like the rewarding of the like your employee of the month at Taco Bell. There's no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no one that gets that award and goes mm. awesome. I'm employee of the month at Taco Bell. You're like, it's, there's, you know, I, this job is a job I go to and there's nothing enjoyable about it. And the only reason the Taco Bell job wouldn't give you joy in a sense is because you're not compensated. Correct. If you're compensated well, that's a great job. The people at In-N-Out Burger are much happier and much. they're making good salaries. What do they some make? Of the, like some of the managers $11 an hour? No, they make like fifteen, but some of the managers make a hundred over a hundred thousand dollars a year. They pay their employees well because they're they're a Christian organization, but not the kind that we think of that are not a shitty trying, not like no, Chick fil A they Christian. They believe in taking care of people. And so oh, like they Jesus. take care of their <laughs> right. So they take care of their workers in the way that, that Jesus would set up business, which is yeah, we'll spread it around a little bit. We're making a lot of money. So they spread it around. Yeah. Well, you know what that that saying I like to quote. I don't know who came up with it, but uh, money's a lot like shit. You s pile it up, and it stinks. Spread it around, make stuff grow. <laughs> <laughs> nice, right? Yeah, that is nice. So here's another one of these great things. So this is uh, Live Ma Scholarship winner Ricard. What is it? Live Ma. Oh, live more. Oh, so live Ma scholarship winner Ricarda works 60 hours a week as a student with cerebral palsy. A busy schedule can't stop her. That's what? the saddest thing. What? She has cerebral palsy and she's a student and you make her work more than a full-time job? She's working a full-time job and a half. And everybody's like, isn't that great? That's fuck again. Horrible. That's horrible, A, that our students have to work full-time jobs just right. to get through. She wants to go to college. You know what that is? She wants to make an investment in herself, which is an investment in our country. That's not a cost. When so, That's why who's going to pay for college? College pays for itself because we're investing in America. It's an investment. When you put money in the bank, that's not like, where did all my money go? Oh, my God, we're losing money. I keep putting it in the bank. No, it's an investment. And that's how stupid Americans are. We want to make it as hard as possible for people to go to college. We want to put as many roadblocks in the way so they have to leap over them. Like, I don't know, you have to work a, a full, full time job and a half with a disability, plus go to college. What the F? I couldn't get her to smile either. How? how uh. <laughs> come on, come on, Ricardo. It's it's for the big uh, photo. How about uh, we gave her a living wage, so now she only has to work a full time job. 
Right? What about 40? If that said 40 hours a week, you'd be like, I mean, it's still terrible because she's got cerebral palsy and she's going to school and she has to work. But 60 hours a week, that is, you should, as a company, the insanity that you think you can put that up as advertising, this that's is, a great thing. This is a great thing. What? This is like this is like back in the 1900s, early 1900s. Like seven year old Timmy, Timmy put seventy hours in the coal mine. He's the coal boy of the week. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Timmy skipped soccer practice to go dig coal. <laughs> that's good. I bet he'll do that again. Now that's going to pay off in the future. And her and she brings her kids along to the Taco Bell to clean up too. Oh God! That's Here's so one more. How how debilitating is cerebral palsy though? Like, it, it, well, I'm sure there's there's variations, right? I mean, yeah. some people have it where you can't walk at all. Some people can. I mean, I mean, I, I, I just wonder if working sixty hours a week is causing her a lot of pain, or like what the. If like, you were fully f- healthy, it would cause you a lot of pain yeah. to work sixty hours a week like that. Yeah. If you were fully nothing wrong with you, here's a guy, uh, D Rex. I like that. That's at D Rex. That's oof. I don't know who that guy is or who he writes for. He looks like a villain in a but Blade, he's important. Blade movie. He does look like a D-Rex. That's, oh. Uh, he says, I had an incredible Uber driver today in L.A. He's homeless, lives in his car, but he's making it work after losing everything. Hey, Daniel. Hey, hey man. Again. Like, it doesn't, like, he doesn't, I mean, I'm not mad at D-Rex or whatever in a sense, but it just shows you how messed up we've become in our culture that a guy with a blue check instead of uh, walks into this situation and goes, hey, we got to fix this system. This is fucked up. There's a huge corporation making tons of money off of people everywhere, undercutting cab drivers. And this guy that can't even afford a bus. What is wrong with our country? This guy has no benefits, has no nothing, no vacation pay. No, can't, can't even tip him because Uber doesn't allow you to tip him. That's what I would have said in the tweet. I would have said, hey, I, I had an Uber driver today, homeless, lives in his car. He's getting by. He's making it work. Fuck you for not letting me tip him, Uber. Yeah, maybe say that. That's why I take Lyft, because Lyft actually does let you tip them. That's uh, um, So this goes to the what's happening in our country, that somehow uh, you're supposed to work two and three jobs. That That's the way you get ahead. That's an old narrative from the 30s. OK, that you, there was a time when immigrants could come to America and work really hard and get ahead. And then their kids would have a better life and their kids would go to college and have be, and it would be that's over. That's over. We have less economic mobility in America's economy than they have in Europe. So why would people come here anymore? They would go there. And if they could. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm sh- so. That's what this is all about. It's a, it's our system. So th- I, I keep saying this over and over, but I can't say it enough because whatever I say it, most of the people don't believe me when I say this, is that we live in the richest country the world has ever seen. Half the people, half the people are poor or in poverty. We have corporations like Walmart that f- five people make $80 billion a year and they're everybody who works for them that generates that income is living in poverty. So that's what we have but going. By the way, we have uh, fast food companies now uh, making billions of dollars in profits, and they're, everybody who works for them is in poverty. When they raised the, the, the minimum wage to $15 in Seattle, did you see how McDonald's, Burger King, and Taco Bell closed up and left? Oh, they didn't? <laughs> what do you no, mean? That economy is chugging along just fine. They've got you know to really why? be— Because so poor people are spending money. Hey, so you, you don't think they're operating at a loss in Seattle, all those fast food companies? It's— Again, why and why is it that restaurant workers? We all like restaurants. Why don't they? Why aren't they allowed to have a living wage? I love eating at restaurants. Everybody does. Why can't people who work at the places we love to go to earn a living wage? What well, is that about? All right. So, TGIFs is a, is a small mom and pop operation. <laughs> and if, if you try to make them, <laughs> so I I read these, and the next night I'm watching Vice. You ever watch Vice News? I have watched Vice so News. They did one. Uh, a woman, uh, black woman, she's probably 45, and she lives in Modesto. So how she makes a living now is on Friday morning she or Thursday night, she drives to San Francisco, which is a two-hour drive about, and then she drives Uber all weekend, sleeps in her car, takes as little rest as she can, and just keeps driving people around all weekend. That's got to be safe. 
And then, right? That's the other thing. Oh, so, yeah. So Lyft has a restriction. They they make you sign out after, I want to say, 10 hours. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uber has no restriction. You can keep going forever. Right. There are no restrictions. Mm-hmm. Right. Big so, problem. Uh, so then she, at the end of this, she you know has her money for however long, and she drives back. And, and this was, even on Vice, I, I guess Vice doesn't really make any judgments, but... It, the way she was acting it came across as a very positive story because she's like well i have freedom but it's like well until you until something happens right to your car or to you right or to anything and then you don't have then you don't have any money there's no there's no safety net when you're working with uber you're if you anything happens you're just screwed but the fact that this was like she was thinking it was a positive thing and you're like there's you're on your own you're out there on a limb, and if anything happens, you're screwed. That's not how society should work. Right. That again, not in the richest country in the world. If we were a poor country and we didn't, we couldn't afford, we were scraping by to, you know, afford our military. But uh, again, where's that? We're supposed to. We're, there's no. I remember when they used to talk about a peace dividend. Remember that there was supposed oh, yeah. to be a peace dividend. That was yeah. during uh, Bill Clinton's uh, presidency. They would talk about a peace dividend because there was no more Cold War, so we're not going to spend trillions of dollars on military anymore, and we're all going to be able to put that money back in our pockets, pay less taxes, and even have more stuff because we're not going to be spending all that money on the military. And that was called the peace dividend, and we never got it. And as soon as people got serious about a peace dividend, we had a terrorist attack, and now we've had nonstop war. We're bombing in seven, eight different countries. We're in Somalia now. We're in Yemen, uh, uh, Syria, Afghanistan. Fifteen years in Afghanistan. You know what I say? Five more years, we get a gold watch. <laughs> Syria, Uber. Libya, Iraq. We've set the whole Middle East on fire, and we're still mad at terrorists. <laughs> Uber. Anyway, this is a great story about it, the new economy. It's a sharing economy because you get to share just a little bit of a trickle of the money that trickled down from the billionaires. But Uber is going to lose at least $2.8 billion this year, possibly over three. They're the most unprofitable startup in the history of our country. And they have actually not done any innovation. What they've done is increase the overhead cost that a normal taxi company would have by being a giant corporation. But at the street level, they do not reduce costs one bit by being a huge monopoly. So they are really making making ride sharing more expensive by driving uh, cabs out of business in the end. Really? And once they stop getting subsidized, they would have to jack up all the prices and they would cost more than taxis. So they're being sub- subsidized by rich people to drive all these little companies out of business and to and to drive taxi workers out of their stable. So they're like the Walmart of taxis. They are the Walmart of taxis. So what Walmart does is they come and they set up a huge superstore that sells everything that all the little stores in the town sell, and they sell it at a discount to put those people out of business. So now nobody has any good jobs. Everybody's poor, but everybody can't put it together that it's coming because of the Walmart, but they got cheaper stuff. Right. So people can't put that together and then... Uh, you know, people say, well, that's what we need, more Walmarts. You know, people who call themselves libertarians. We need more. That's a good thing, you fucking idiots. Each cost, e- also, each ride that Uber does cost them 41%. You know, I do I do like the idea of, you know, having this service, right? Like, it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a luxury service, certainly, that I could enjoy just as much from a taxi. But all my experiences with taxis have Horrible. been- Horrible. You know, like, right. I, it's like- how much am I going to spend? It's going to be your guess. Yeah, that. Well, I mean, that's the problem is they went into a business that, it, I mean, essentially ta- a lot of cab drivers are just assholes and, and, and shysters. And so they did go into a business and now people trust them. But at the end of the day, the, the, the bigger thing is that they're going to be bad for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. But they well, are keeping people in line as far as how they behave. You know these yeah, drivers because you because you get to rate them right. So it's this weird system. Yeah, cab cab drivers are awful, but again, well, I think the cab industry isn't responding to the need of society. It hasn't grown. It hasn't progressed. Right. They haven't made it themselves more accessible. Where's They're their not app? Being very competitive. Where's they, their app? They have some. So I've been to places where they have apps. I yeah. Get, sometimes I'll get out of a, a an airport and I'll see you know use this app. But the problem is is that th- there is not one cab company in town. Right. Right. Do you know why? No. Because it's not profitable to expand a cab company. They keep them small for a reason. If 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 that was profitable to create a big monopoly, 
another company would have done it with cabs 20, 30 years ago. The reason you don't see it is what Uber's doing is not profitable. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's interesting. So what? So they're counting on after they knock everybody out of the business, then they'll jack everybody's rates up, and that's when they'll start making money. You think that's what's going to happen? Yeah. Or... Or the the other plan is that they'll they'll have driverless cars, but from what I've read, the cost to get that fleet out would wipe them out completely. First of all, and and by the way, driverless cars. I'm going to make a big prediction: never going to work. <laughs> That's a big prediction. I know, and I don't know anything about technology, so I could be totally wrong. But how they get? What about bike lanes? Well, that, turns they, out I, I saw yeah, a thing today. Yeah. They don't know about bike. They don't know how to do bike lanes. Right? right? You they see don't know that? how to do bike lanes. Yeah. I don't know how but to that's do bike just like I don't regular, know how to do that's bike That's just lanes. like regular drivers, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, by the way, the cup, there had a lot of the driverless cars, Uber, were going through red lights. Is that true? Yeah. So they had to stop them in San Francisco. Let's look that up. Well, so, please, so they please. just, in San Francisco, Uber the, Uber just came out and said, we're putting, uh, we're testing cars on the road. And San Francisco said, no, you're not. You got to get permission to do that. And And they were like, no, we're putting them out there. And then Uber's response was, because they just kept putting them out. Uber's response was, well, we have people in the cars, so they're not actually driverless cars. Exactly. And then they went on to say, and, and it's not, they're not actually, it's not, technology's not actually being used. And it's like, so you're just putting cars on the road? <laughs> <laughs> like, what's the problem? Why are you, yeah, so they, look, they have to get, they have to get the idea that they're going to have driverless cars everywhere out there because there's no way they're not scared that all their money's going to dry up very, very soon. So they have to keep pretending like they're doing something special. Uh, it said, a spokesperson said, both incidents were under review. Safety is our type. What top incidents? Priority. What incidents? The cars running the red lights. So, so there, they're under review right now. Where? Uh, this is in San Francisco. So cars were, so the driverless there's cars. One, there's one car that, that um, they found was going, it was like taking Sunday morning, a picture of it going through a red light. So they were going through red lights. Mm -hmm. so that's what I heard. So, uh, yeah, as soon as there's a uh, truck uh, drives into a school bus, driverless cars are going to be. <laughs> I'm telling well, that's you. just it. If they they hit one kid. And, one kid. And adult adult with people would be like, whatever. But one kid. That's not true. Sandy Hook happened. I'm going to take it all back. Okay, we'll see what happens with this. I guess you know what. If it's profitable, it will happen. I'm going to take everything back. I said. <laughs> if it's profitable, it's not profitable. They're losing money. Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> <laughs>